Sometimes I like to do dumb stuff. What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today we've got a special project, a little something different. I know I've been doing a lot of that, a little something different lately, but this weekend I decided to take on a project that has always frankly tempted me. I built a Hackintosh. So if you don't know what a Hackintosh is, it's basically loading Mac OS X, uh, in this case High Sierra, onto a PC. Uh, this isn't easy because obviously Apple doesn't want you to do this. If you want to run the Mac OS, they want you to buy an Apple computer. But, you know, for a weekend project, I thought this would be a lot of fun. I have an iMac here. It's a 2014 iMac. It's one of the 5K 27-inch models, and it's relatively new. It was bought, it's the late 2014 model, so it's not brand new, but it's about four years old. Uh, and it's got a four gigahertz Intel i7 processor, 24 gigs of RAM. It is DDR3, 1600 mega, megahertz RAM, and an AMD Radeon M295X, four gigabyte graphics card in it. Compare that to this, which is basically a computer I had sitting around in parts form. It's a pretty big difference. So this computer was basically unused. It's Parts of it used to be my gaming PC. Parts of it used to be my streaming PC. Other parts were just not being used at all. Um, and it seemed like a shame not to be using them. So I decided to repurpose those parts and build a Macintosh, a Hackintosh. And this is what I came up with. So what you're seeing here is, at the core, an i7-6700K processor. It's about a two-year-old i7 processor that's overclockable and overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz. And we also have a graphics card in here. This is an AMD Radeon, I believe it's a RX 480 4 gigabyte model. So it's not a brand new uh, graphics card. Again, it's about a two-year-old graphics card, uh, but it's doing the trick in this. The motherboard itself is a Asus Z170-K motherboard. Um, and we've got some other, you know, kind of stuff. We got a ADATA hard drive, uh, SSD. We got some ADATA RAM in there as well. A Corsair water cooler and some Noctua fans. Basically, an S340 Elite case, kind of. Uh, it's kind of hacked together from two different cases. Uh, this thing, it really is hacked together from a bunch of different PCs. It, it's not one PC. But what was interesting about this was actually the build process, or, or more, more specifically, putting OS X onto the computer. So once the computer was all built, uh, basically you use a tool called UniBeast uh, to load OS X on your PC. And to do that, you need to have a Mac, or you need to have access to a Mac to actually download uh, the operating system, in this case, OS X High Sierra. You do that, you load it onto a USB stick with the Unibeast tool, and then you load it and the drivers for the computer you're building uh, into the computer. All told, it was not a simple process. Uh, there was a lot of Googling to figure out why my graphics card wasn't working, why Final Cut Pro was crashing. Uh, there's a lot of issues kind of discovered and fixed along the way. None of them were outrageously difficult to find. Just Googling the exact issue uh, really did solve 99% of the problem. The last one I'm really working on that I haven't fixed yet is that USB 2 is working on this PC, but USB 3 is not. But I gotta say, the whole process took me about 24 hours. From the time I started to the time I stopped. Started like on Saturday night. I finished on Sunday evening. And, you know, it wasn't just straight working on this. It was, you know, load something up, walk away, come back, see if it worked. If it didn't, try something else. That kind of thing. But about a weekend project. And it runs really well. <laughs> it runs super well. So... I wanted to do just a little bit of benchmarking for the thing I do the most. So all of the videos that I produce for YouTube are made on my iMac, the 2014 iMac. And again, like I said earlier, it's a four gigahertz Intel i7. I wanna say it's a 4790, but I'm not positive about that. I'd have to look it up to actually know what processor is in this. In this computer, you know, obviously I was able to overclock using the BIOS. I was able to get things running much cooler because it's a 
desktop PC as opposed to laptop laptop parts hanging off the back of a comp uh, monitor. I was pretty impressed with the performance of this. So I did some testing in Final Cut and Compressor. And while the results didn't blow me away, if you look at these results and average out the amount of time saved over the course of a year or two years, you start getting some time back. So the first thing I did was I took a 22 minute 1080p video and I rendered them on both this computer, the Hackintosh and on the iMac. On the iMac, it took 20 minutes and 50 sec 56 seconds. On the Hackintosh, it took 16 minutes and 41 seconds. So that was a four minute improvement for that one 22 minute video. That 22 minute video also had some post-processing on it, uh, color filtering. Um, I think it even, I even put like a cartoon filter on it just to give the computers a little more of a workload. Um, I also did a 4K video. Now the 4K video was about a five minute video. I ran it on the same exact render on both PCs or both Macs. And on the iMac, it took 18 minutes and 42 seconds. On the Hackintosh, it took 16 minutes and nine seconds. So that was about um, two minute and 30 second improvement on this newer Hackintosh as compared to the iMac. Now, what's also interesting about this is that I have a problem with Apple right now. Apple still makes the software that I want to be using. I really enjoy Mac OS X. I really like Final Cut. I really like Compressor. The software does what I want it to do, but I don't actually like Apple computer hardware right now. I don't like their laptops. I don't really like iMacs that much. You know, I'd much rather be able to buy a desktop computer made by Apple. Now, they have said that they may be making a Mac Pro in the future. We don't know when that's going to happen. It could come out as early as this fall. It may come out in 2019 or 2020. There are the iMac Pros, but you know, to get into an iMac Pro, you're really kind of getting into hardware that it's extremely expensive and it's stuffed into a laptop form factor on the back of a monitor, just like with the regular iMacs. Now, apparently the cooling has been redone, but what we're talking about here is something that's, you know, I think they start at four or five thousand dollars and they go up from there. And you're still, you're in that iMac form factor, which is very limiting. You can't add any hardware to that computer. You can't add a new graphics card if you want to. You can't overclock your processor. You can't add water cooling to your processor. Um, you know, if I want to upgrade my graphics card, I just pull it out and I put in a new one and load the drivers for it. It's really that simple with this computer. And this isn't even a brand new computer. It's a 6700K. That processor is about two years old. So the price of this computer, I, I priced it all out on PC Part Picker, is about $1,300. That's not a little bit of money, but to get an equivalent iMac at this point would be more like $2,500. And you know, you're getting some stuff in here that you can't get in an iMac. You're getting upgradability, you're getting water cooling, you're getting a lot of stuff that you just can't get in a new iMac. So I'd love to see them start making desktops again. I really would. Uh, up till that point, a solution like this makes a lot of sense for somebody who's really addicted to Mac OS X. And I gotta say, aside from the USB 3 ports not working, everything else works fine. It wasn't an easy process to get there. Like I said, it took me some time to get the graphics card working, the iGPU working, Final Cut working, there were a bunch of things along the way. The, even getting the NIC card to work in the computer took a little bit of time. But once I was there, everything works great. And it only took about 24 hours to really figure it all out. Uh, you can even put your own monitor on it. You're not locked into Apple's choice of monitors. You can put your own mouse and keyboard on it. I went with these Corsair wireless jobs that I think are pretty cool. Um, overall, I, I got to say, I'm really impressed with it. I don't know if it's going to replace my iMac for daily use, you know, having two iMacs or two Macintoshes in the office right now seems a bit redundant, but as a weekend project, this was, certainly was cool. And I'm going to edit this video on this computer just to try it out. And the increased speed of rendering the videos is awesome. I do want to talk about gaming a little bit. I did run some games on this thing. So I loaded up Borderlands 1. 
I loaded up Rise of the Tomb Raider, and I <laughs> Tomb Raider, sorry, and I loaded up um, Fortnite. So Borderlands One, that's a pretty old game. It ran flawlessly, no problem. Rise of the Tomb Raider, it was it was playable. Uh, the benchmarks, if you did see a little bit of frame skipping, uh, and that wasn't even like on the highest settings. It was really on medium settings. Fortnite was rough. Um, Fortnite usually isn't that hard a game to run. I mean, you can run it on your phone, for Christ's sake. On this computer, it was just not running that good. What I found was there was a lot of stuttering, especially when I was near other pl people. Now, I don't play a lot of Fortnite. Maybe that's just a thing in that engine. Uh, but if I were to build this thing and I wanted to play games on it, Definitely just load Windows on a separate disk and have a dual boot option. Like, there's no reason to be gaming in Mac OS right now. Not even if you have, like, a powerful computer. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Mac OS is just not optimized the way Windows is for gaming. Microsoft has done a much better job with the direct or DirectX uh, drivers uh, for gaming. Mac OS, they're, it's not a priority for them. So it's, it's just not a good thing to be doing with a Macintosh computer. Uh, but with something like this, you could easily just add another hard drive in there, have that be the Windows boot drive, and just switch to Windows when you want to play some games on the same computer. Uh, it'd be a pretty easy process, to be honest with you. So overall, I got to say, this was a huge success. <laughs> I'm really impressed with this computer. It's cool looking. It's got kind of an Apple-y aesthetic to it with the white front and the glass sides. Once you get to the inside, it's a little rougher, uh, you know, with the Noctua fans and stuff like that. But overall, I'm very pleased with it. I'm thinking about getting a better monitor for 4K video editing because this is kind of a weird monitor. It's a very old monitor. That it's like it's 16 by 10, not 16 by 9, which honestly, I don't know what happened to those kind of monitors. It seems like a better computing you know, size, but what, whatever. Beside the point, I'm pretty impressed with this thing overall. I, I'm certainly not going to play video games on it. I got other things to play video games on. But for doing work in Mac OS... It works, and it works good. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.